welcome to vlog number 17. In the last episode, you have seen the phenomenal results I got from my photocentric 3D printer. The level of detail that I achieved is fantastic, and I'm sure the end result will look just as good, but not blue. This has given me the best possible starting point to rework the parts for mould making and production. I'm particularly pleased with the base, which has now gone off for moulding and casting in resin. The figures and smaller parts have been reworked with milliput, and these need to be converted into metal masters, as they're just too fragile to withstand vulcanising. To do this, I'll use my traditional method of cold cure silicon moulds. You can find out more about this process in my popular how-to series. And here are the raw castings from the silicon moulds. They still have the air vents attached and need cleaning up, but the quality is really good. After a couple of days of cleaning up and fitting, this is the end result. These masters are now perfect for vulcanising. I've carefully planned what parts will go on what mould, to give me the best chance of successful casting. Here you can see the additional braces on the track units, which will reinforce the part while moulding and allow the metal to flow better when I'm casting. Some of the parts need to be slightly thickened up at the back, to make sure they mould and cast well. The next mould is for the larger parts. There's very little modification needed on these, as they're pretty much good to go. I've added an identification flag over the stowage bin on the rear of the turret in Milliput. This is historically accurate, and will give a good splash of colour to the model. And here are the vulcanised production moulds. The black rubber one is for the smaller metal masters, such as the figures and fine details. The cream moulds are made from a soft, low temperature silicon rubber that's kinder to the resin parts. All of these moulds will be cast on my centrifugal casting machine. Unfortunately, there were casualties. The vulcanising process did distort some of the masters, which can't be repaired and getting the tracks out of the mould didn't go well, as you can see from the remains. On the plus side, the moulds look good, and the resin bases have arrived. I use a company called Historycraft to cast my bases, and I'm always delighted with the quality of what they produce. They're very helpful, and capable of moulding and casting to the highest standard. There's a link to their website in the description. With the moulds made, it was on to casting and assembly of the sample. This always takes time to get right, as minor distortions in the castings mean the degree of fettling is needed to get everything fitting together perfectly. There were some issues along the way, but everything finally went together well, and with all the detailed parts added, the Panzer IV really came to life. The aerial adds a nice touch, and the figures suit the model well, giving atmosphere and scale. Now let's see how it looks painted, deckled and finished. This particular Panzer IV was finished in dark grey from the factory, but in theatre Dunkelgelb mottling was applied with a spray gun for additional camouflage. I've recreated this with my Harder and Stingbeck airbrush, and I'm delighted with the result. The stowage on the back gives a bit of character, and the figures work very well, providing scale and context. The Nazi flag over the stowage bin gives a nice touch of colour, and the tools, lights and spare tracks add plenty of detail. The painting and weathering of the tank and its base have come out really well, and I think it accurately depicts the Panzer IV during its assault on Stalingrad in 1942. I've already planned the next five tank releases, and will announce the next tank soon, so make sure you're subscribed to get all the latest news. You can find out more on the Staples and Vine website. There's a link to the Panzer IV in the description. With the Panzer IV now in production, I can turn my attention to the next new models. 
Making a return to 1 to 144 scale, I'll be releasing the TSR-2 and SR-71A Blackbird. I've been working on these two aircraft in my spare time, and having sourced some detailed plans, I've modelled them in my CAD software. The undercarriage for the TSR-2 was a particular challenge to recreate, but using plans and photographs, I'm confident I've got it right. The Blackbird is a piece of sculpture in its own right, and has to be one of the most iconic aircraft of all time. As ever with the CAD models, I produce rendered images of the subject. This helps me judge whether I've got the look right, and to see if I need to tweak anything prior to 3D printing. They also look pretty cool. The next stage is to break the model down for 3D printing. This is the front fuselage for the TSR-2. The blue areas are removable support structures, which are necessary for 3D printing. They'll easily break away when I clean up the print. And these are the nacelles for the Blackbird. As you can see, there is a lot of internal support structure for these, as they are hollow. Let's have a look at the main prints for the TSR-2. All of these parts are printed in ABS, and are printed really well. Once the support material has been removed, they'll be cleaned up and converted into metal masters using cold cure silicon moulds. The wing is deliberately too thick, so that when I cast the metal master, I have plenty of material to work with, to get the correct profile. The 3D prints for the Blackbird need quite a bit of work, especially the nacelles. These parts will also be converted into metal masters, using the same process. You can find out more about the TSR-2, SR-71 and the Panzer IV by following the links in the description, which will take you to my website. As you can see from my channel, I always have lots of projects going on, which I hope you'll find interesting. You can even explore in more depth the techniques I use in my popular how-to series. I hope you enjoyed my vlog. If you did, hit the like button, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.